Welcome to our roundup video of the Geneva Motor Show. This is all the weird and wonderful stuff and the stuff we just didn't have time for in a separate video. And we're starting with this. This is the Honda Civic hatchback concept, prototype actually. And I think it looks really quite good actually. If it gets to production, then I can see a Civic Type R looking very good with this as the base model. It already looks much more aggressive, doesn't it? Honda also wheel out the coolest historic cars and on the stand is Richie Genther's 1965 RA272 F1 car looking very beautiful indeed. So we see various sort of styling exercises and creations from tuning houses that are, to be honest, well, I hate to use the word excrescence, but that's, that's what they are. And then there are things like this at the other end of the scale. This is the AC Schnitzer ACL2, and it's based on an M235i, some in it where it's dim and distant past. Then it takes the engine from an M4, tunes it up to 570 brake horsepower, takes the front and rear axles from an M4, puts bucket seats inside, still retains the manual gearbox. I just think it looks absolutely brilliant. This is one of my cars of the show. It really is. I really, really want to drive it. As you may know, Citroen now has this sub-brand DS, and this is the E-Tense, which is a concept. It's got 400 brake horsepower and 380 pounds foot of torque, and it's fully electric, as you would expect, because that's what most things seem to be at this show this year. But I think it looks really rather good. And the whole DS performance brand, yeah, it would be nice. I'd like to see it work. So we're sitting in the Tesla Model X, which, um, well, everyone seems to love, to be honest. This is the largest curved windscreen in production, apparently. Doors also open automatically, and we've got 762 brake horsepower, 713 pounds foot of torque. Of course, we've got the ludicrous mode, which will mean that this two and a half ton SUV will go from 0 to 60 miles an hour in just 3.2 seconds. Even 3.8 without the ludicrous mode involved, which is um, still pretty good. Range of around 250 miles, and because it's all electric and all the electric governance is, is below the seats here, they also claim it's exceptionally safe because there's no obviously no big engine up in front. You know, Musk described it as like jumping into a, if you wanted to jump into a swimming pool, would you want to jump into a swimming pool with a rock in it or without a rock in it? The engine being the rock in this metaphor. We've also got a 17 inch touchscreen here, which is obviously the thing we've seen before in the Model S. Of course, the biggest party piece of this car, and the one that's got all the attention, are the Falcon doors, which, um, yeah, they do look very cool. You need 30 centimeters either side to be able to open them and they've got all sorts of sensors to make sure they don't touch any low ceilings, which is, is quite cool. So there we go. That is the Tesla Model X. This is the Lycan Hypersport, and if you don't know about it already from the Fast and Furious films, apparently that's what it's in, um, you're probably thinking it's electric. It's bound to be. Everything seems to be electric. It looks like this, or have a jet engine in the back. But no, the internals are from Roof, or I suppose originally from Porsche. So it's got a flat six and 780 brake horsepower and rear wheel drive and 708 pounds foot of torque and a manual gearbox. I like it. This is the Maserati Levante with extra models inside. And well, it looks arresting, I suppose. I mean, I, I don't know what to think about these things, given that the Cayenne obviously was an ugly so-and-so and yet still sold in bucket loads and allowed Porsche to do all sorts of exciting things. And I know we've said that in the past, but if this does exactly the same for Maserati, then I'm not going to criticize it. This is Mercedes C43 AMG 4MATIC here in convertible form. It's essentially a more affordable way into the AMG range in the C-Class. It's got a twin turbo V6 putting out 362 brake horsepower and 384 pounds foot of torque. Could be quite good, really. Four-wheel drive is standard, obviously. Nine-speed gearbox. Comes in coupe, too. Our old friend Nimrod, the designer house, has got to work on the 488 GTB. This is now known as the Le Mans. Aren't these lovely? Over here, they've done something to an Aventador, which if you didn't like the Centenario, well, you could have one of these, perhaps, instead. This is the Pininfarina stand at the Geneva Motor Show. And this is, well, it's not just a concept, apparently. It's the green GT, and it's powered by hydrogen, as you can tell. There are three tanks, so sort of one down each side, and then one across here, and the fuel cell sits above it. Then the hydrogen mixes with the air that comes in through this roof scoop down here, produces, well, H2O, electricity, heat, and powers it. 510 brake horsepower about 1,400 kilos, and they're gonna try and produce them. They're gonna start development with Olivier Panis, apparently, which is pretty exciting, I think. Rear wheel drive, 
They'd like a sort of race series with all these things. I like it. It looks good. It looks funky. I like the colour scheme too. Love a bit of fluoro. There's also another car over here, which is a bit more old school. Isn't it? So this is a 1969 Pininfarina project, and I sort of assumed it had been repainted or something to match the new car over there. But this was the original livery, and that was painted to match this. And it looks rather wonderful. I love the snake pit of exhausts at the back, particularly. So there we go. Oh, sorry, I'm in the comfiest place on the entirety of the Geneva Motor Show. This is the Bentley stand, and this is the new Malsan. We've got the standard model, we have the speed model, and this is the extended wheelbase model. It's got all the new infotainment system in here, so we've got an iPad coming out of the seat in front of me. And as it's extended wheelbase, even somebody of my height, six foot five, can fit in here. And this nice airline seat, which now comes out of here, which is rather nice. We've still got the champagne cooler back here, and um, this little table in case I actually want to do any work or I can go to sleep. Chassis, well, there's new bushings on the subframe, so it's now, now quieter. They've also worked with Dunlops, so there's now a foam filling inside the tyres which has decreased the noise inside the car by apparently four decibels, which is about half, basically, to what it was before. I drove a Bentley Mulsanne recently, and I can't say it was exactly a loud experience, so the idea of halving the interior noise is, is pretty extraordinary. And yes, it's a very lovely place to be. The interior, the infotainment system did need updating before, so that's a, a massive step on. It's still got the six and three quarter litre V8 engine up front. It's a lovely place to be. So if you could just sort of leave me alone, then I can have a sleep. Thank you. Hands up, who remembers the Gump to Apollo? It was a fairly extreme track car, but very, very good to drive. Well, this is the new Apollo Arrow, and I think it looks pretty bloody good, frankly. It's got the same steel chassis, so they haven't gone down the carbon fibre route. Uh, it's got the same 4.2 litre uh, hot V Audi source V8, and yeah, it's, it's very honest, basically. Rear-wheel drive, SEMA seven-speed sequential gearbox, and it's just got, well, it's got inboard dampers, Olin's dampers, despite it's got wearing KW dampers at the moment, uh, the springs and dampers for Olin's will be for the final spec. It's obviously very different in terms of the aero and much more appealing. There's a lot of work being done just behind these front wheels, so there's actually a grey part there that you can just remove, basically, which really helps the airflow down the side of the car, apparently. And it's got proper backing as well. Some Hong Kong investors have, have put the money up for this car. It's 100 millimetres longer in the cabin and higher, which is good for me, because I always struggle to get into the uh, old Apollo. And I think it sounds great. They're claiming 1,000 brake horsepower, or they want 1,000 brake horsepower and 1,000 newton meters, which is 737 pounds foot. No more figures than that at the moment, but I'm quite excited by it. It's, it's one of those cars you just think it could be very honest. It's being built to be, you know, it's not trying to be rewrite the rule books to some extent, but the Apollo Arrow, let us know what you think. Behind me is the Skoda Vision S concept, which prefigures the Kodiak. 4x4 that's going to be coming out fairly soon. That's quite a good looking thing. Skoda have got a history of doing quite good looking concepts at the Geneva Motor Show and this is definitely another one. There's a sort of a line of, you can see certain hints of, of Land Rover I think or sort of a Vogue or something in the, the window going down to C-pillar but there we go. It's got 154 brake horsepower petrol engine in it, 1.4 litres and then a 54 brake horsepower electric motor in it as well so petrol electric hybrid good for 0 to 62 miles an hour in 7.4 seconds apparently. Three rows of seats, six in this, apparently it's going to be seven in the production version. A good looking thing, the car. Class enough for when your Range Rover just isn't bad enough or blue enough. So this is the Tech Rules stand. Now you might not have heard of Tech Rules but they're essentially a Chinese engineering company and this is a design study but it is a fully working car and if you remember the CX-75 originally had those jet turbines in it, well, that's the technology in the back of here. It's got two electric motors in the front, four at the back. It's got over a thousand brake horsepower. And get this, they're saying the combined Newton meters are over 8,000 Newton meters. That's over 6,000 pounds feet of torque in this car. A single gear, because obviously that's all you'd need with that much torque. And uh, yeah, they want to go to the Nürburgring with it. It's crazy but brilliant and I love the fact people are doing this. We're seeing more and more of these at the Geneva Motor Show this year 
and it feels like they're actually gaining some traction, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, yeah, you can see the carbon chassis and the jet engine in the back of the car over there. I love the fact it works and it looks cool. These are a new breed of supercars and yeah, it weighs 1350 kilos as well. So it's not actually, that's not too bad given the weight of that. Oh, and the range as well, because of the jet engine, the range, 2000 miles. So no more range anxiety, definitely no more range anxiety. So let us know, what do you think of it? Do you like the styling? Do you like the concept? Do you like the idea of hearing a jet engine going on behind you? I do. This is the brand new Chevrolet Corvette Grand Sport, which is, well, it's rather great. Nightfall grey, apparently, with the um, Smurf blue sort of additions to it. It's, uh, it's quite cool, really. It's basically a Z06 with the Stingray's 6.2 litre V8 naturally aspirated engine in it. So 466 brake horsepower, manual gearbox, and it looks like this. What's not to like, really? I really want to drive one of these. I love the race car over there as well. It just looks so cool. I know everyone's going on about the Ford GT, but still the Corvette. It's going to take quite a lot of beating, I think. Up there challenging for the top spot in most arresting design is Techart. You have the Magnum Sport over there based on the Cayenne. There's some sort of turbo behind you in the turquoise with four exhausts coming out of the back. And this is the Grand GT, or a very, very purple Panamera. The other brand that, of course, can be relied upon to bring along some beautiful heritage cars is Porsche. And this time's no exception. Look at it. Beautiful 718 RS60 Spider, obviously in honor of the new four-cylinder Boxster. Also remember to have a look at our 911R video, which you can see by clicking on a button up here. I think. Up here? Down here a bit. Probably up here. Go and have a look anyway. Andreas Proningus has lots of lovely and interesting things. So here I am clearly at home in a Morgan three-wheeler, but it's a Morgan three-wheeler with a difference because you can see there's no combustion engine on the front. This is an electric three-wheeler. Now apparently they've had mules running around uh, in Morgan for a while now and they decided to put it well, into this. It's got about the same sort of performance as the combustion engine car, 62 brake horsepower. They've tried to keep the weight very central. It's got a range of about 150 miles and you can charge it in well, anywhere between 45 minutes and eight hours, depending on obviously the charge you're putting into it, how you're charging it. Design, well, there's all sorts of design cues from everything from a Napier Railton to uh, some classic racing motorbike with that offset headlight up the front, which looks very cool. The bit that looks almost like a radio at the front, they're, they're brass heat sinks, obviously helping to cool the batteries. And this is from an old Ford pickup in here, this steering wheel. And, oh, carbon fiber bodywork on a Morgan, still over a wood frame though. And it's, it's handmade carbon fiber in the, in the UK. It's cool, I can see this, I like it. It's, uh, yeah. So that's it for our roundup at the Motor Show 2016. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope we haven't missed out too much. Let us know in the comments box below. What was your favorite car of the show? Just keep looking at this. I'd drive home, isn't it? Might take a while though.